The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication, podcast publishing made easy, Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Welcome to the Old Time Radio Network Suspense Stories. Are you ready for a thriller, chiller, or the macabre? We now go back to the early days of radio and our imaginations with our featured suspense presentation. Suspense. This is the man in black, here to introduce Columbia's program, Suspense. Heading our Hollywood cast tonight is the distinguished American actor, the star of the Broadway suspense drama, Angel Street, who has recently returned to this coast to resume his film career, Mr. Vincent Price. Tonight's suspense play, which presents Mr. Price, and which is produced and directed by William Spear, relates an episode of recent years in the unfriendly Nazi capital of Berlin. The strange death of Charles Umberstein by E. Jack Newman is tonight's tale of suspense. If you have been with us before, you will know that suspense is compounded of mystery and suspicion and dangerous adventure. In this series are tales calculated to intrigue you, stir your nerves, to offer you a precarious situation and then withhold the solution until the last possible moment. And so, with the strange death of Charles Umberstein and with the performance of Vincent Price, we again hope to keep you in suspense. I was infuriated to think I had been trapped. I thought that someone had discovered my intentions maddened me to the breaking point. Nothing had slipped. Everything had run smoothly as I had planned. No evidence, not the slightest trace, nothing. And yet, I was trapped. Trapped? But why? How? Let me see. Papers in my briefcase. Train ticket. Information forwarded safely to my office. And he knew. How? 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 But he did know. I stood quietly in my room, watching him, watching him, watching me, waiting for me, standing by the lamppost beneath my window, knowing, knowing he had trapped me, waiting for me. I recognized him almost immediately. Captain von Heinz. Once before I had seen him briefly in Herr Miller's office. I'd been working on some corrections. Herr Miller was escorting him through the plant on an inspection tour. They stopped for a moment outside my office. I glanced up as Herr Miller gestured my way through the partially open door. Well, here it was. They were talking about me. My heart stopped. He was explaining how I had been recommended by the Fuhrer himself, my qualification. They continued on their tour. Herr Miller ex- explained later when I went to his office. Ah, uh-huh, Umberstein, there you are. Herr Miller, you sent for me? Yes, Umberstein. And this morning when Captain von Hind and myself passed by your office... I knew it was you. You knew it was me? Yes. Captain von Heinz is head of Gestapo intelligence in this area. He was conducting a routine inspection this morning, and it was he who suggested that... Well, uh, since your recommendations were by the Führer himself... Yes? Your work here has been excellent. I knew you were a man when I passed by today. My work? Uh, Oh, <laughs> no, 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 of course, not that. Uh, why, you have become one of our best men. Oh, thank you, Henry. No, this is it. Yes, Henry. Through various posts, we are releasing more prints from munitions areas in this country uh, and other countries. Uh, you are to be in complete charge of their release from the law. I understand, Henry. As a citizen of the Reich, I am greatly honored that I have been given such an opportunity. An opportunity to show your loyalty. And honor. I will give you the combination. You will see that no other person enters the law. Of course, Henry. 
Uh, one moment, Umberstein. Yes. I think I should tell you that a few months ago in one of the neighboring clans, the Gestapo apprehended a spy. Yes? He was working for an enemy espionage. Found in possession of certain vital documents which he had access to in his work. Uh, what did they learn from him? Many things. He was reluctant to speak at first, but difficult to hold out indefinitely. Please, that's so he finally gave them enough information to locate other agents who had filled it in. It was well he was detected. Oh, yes. The uh, Gestapo is still on the alert for some of his co-workers, still expected to arrive. Of course, they are ignorant of his confession and his faith. So, Herr Umberstein, I must warn you to take all the necessary steps against the possibility of espionage. You cannot be too careful. I shall be careful. The new Umberstein is exemplified the efficiency of the Third Reich. I closed my suitcase and looked down on the street. I watched him standing there. I kept asking myself, how, 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 how could he know? This Captain von Hein, how could he know? The plan was perfect, the best yet, and yet I was discovered, trapped. It was a late Saturday afternoon, and the silence of the day hung heavy in the room. Outside it was cold, very cold, but in my room it was warm, stuffy. The radiator hissed and spewed as though it were the judge of the events to come. I was almost angry at it. A radiator. It was still light enough that he might see me if I crossed and raised the window. But he wasn't aware that I was in the room. I hadn't turned on the light. Now he stood there, waiting for me to return. <laughs> I lay down on the bed, smoking. My thoughts troubled by the one question. How? How? How had he discovered me? Safely, I had avoided all connections with anyone who might have a chance to spy on my work. There was not the least cause for suspicion. An established citizen of the right, well-recommended, pure Aryan, employed as an architect in one of the country's largest munitions plants, certainly there was no reason for him to suspect me. The Gestapo, this Captain von Hein, waiting to take me. Fräulein Keller. Oh, of course not. Not she. Could you have trusted me? Fräulein Keller. Did I give her any reason? Any reason? According to my information, he was one of the most unpopular men in London. Good morning, Fräulein. Good morning. My name is Charles Umberstein. I'm the munition factory near here. I wish to take a room. Oh? One facing the outer street, Fräulein. Accommodate me? Oh, I think so. We have one which is on the second floor. Oh, they look pretty strong. Oh, fine. I'm glad. It looks comfortable here. Small and comfortable. Oh, yes. You will like it, I'm sure. Uh, I'm the owner and manager here. Fräulein. Sign here, please. Go ahead. There you are. Can I help you? Otto, would you show Herr Umberstein to his room? Yes, who is it? Oh, just a moment. Yes, Fräulein? I I have brought you some excellent things. Oh, you may be cool. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you, Fräulein. And uh, Herr Umberstein, down the stuff is a little cafe. You may find nice news and a little music, too. Oh, wonderful. I am indebted to you, Fräulein. But you are my charge. I look after my guests. It is my job. Oh, that is most kind, Fräulein. Uh, Herr Umberstein, I, I also dine at the little cafe. Oh, no. <laughs> We published his novels, you know. Oh. We were very sorry to hear of his death. I bet you were. For you, Fräulein, for your wonderful hospitality. Oh, to you, Herr Oberstein. <laughs> oh, Fräulein, it's growing late. I must be off. I have a great many things to do tomorrow. Oh, and so do I. Yes, I know. Oh, it has been a wonderful evening. Wonderful. Yes, wonderful. Here's your coat. Huh? It's me and you'd have liked to eat. It's growing colder now, isn't it? Yes, winter will be here soon. Too soon. Yeah, but I won't be. Then my father found it. Eh? You won't? Oh, nothing. Fräulein, nothing. Certainly, Fräulein. Certainly, I was just wishing. For what? No, I've done it. I started to thinking. 
Captain, 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 Captain
However, now, I would like to know how remember, much more that we are bound to be introduced, <laughs> you and I. My duties with the Ordnance Division are, of course, near and so far, kind of yeah, this very far. Once inside the city, I'm Oberlaus and Hans Neumann of Army Ordnance, understand? Here, Charles. Right. You expect me to believe a person very story like that, Troy? Yes. Yes. It happened to be the truth. I think so. Yes, yeah. yeah. not bad. Uh, male or female? I couldn't tell. Very considerate of understand to have looked this way. Well, they come into the room, Ticket? Inspector. I just summed up the window and turned a picture on the counter. Well, I don't think there was any in here. I think this is all a figment of your very first opportunity. Now, don't you start. First opportunity to become a I'd like to know what you were doing on the scene. And I will see that you are highly recommended from a reliable source. He's requested permission to get really fast in his manuscript. Many bones and hermits. You needn't worry, Helmbert. Well, that was the title of it. It'll be good. I assure you. Is that right? Overlightenant Neumann, if you please. Overlightenant. Yes, listen to me. Well, then, my hair child, Gumbert Stein. Auf Wiedersehen. Heil Hitler. Where is Heil Hitler? Yes, everything Hans had said came about. Uh, I picked up my information each month at the little hotel. I left an occasional yeah, report for Hans. It was the only way we ever communicated. And then, Oberleut and Hans Neumann began to appear in Franz Mirror's office. And eventually, Mirror introduced In fact, Hans was with Mirror quite frequently, and they dined together regularly. Hans played his part well. But one day, something was worrying. I will wait here for mm -hmm. you, Miller. I'll be with you in a moment. Oh, ah, Elmerstein. Helen, please. It's good to see you again. I'd like to know, Mike. I'm going to speak very high of your work here. Inspector, I suggest you we get talk to the lady. Behind. May I remind There's you that you're under arrest? I don't know okay, what it is. It looks like you have to There is something I recognize about the name. The eyes are... Yes, yes, yes. We were just chatting a moment. I've seen one time someone before. Be very careful. And don't come with us in case they ask you. Well, well, then, you all ready? Why, yes, of course. Umberstein, uh, would you care to join us at oh. luncheon? No, no, thank you. I, I have some work to do. Uh, always work. Well, then, let's go, Hans, yeah? Yeah, certainly. Oh, by the way, will Captain Von Hein be joining us today? Von Hein says he's in the Something is delayed. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, a remarkable man. No one likes him. No one likes him. My lawyer. Watching you. Such a brief one. Curt and sinister. Hans was frightened. He would never have taken the chance to speak to me if he had not been frightened. Something he recognized about the time. Saturday was the first month. There was no information from the hotel. Hans didn't appear again to lunch with him. Really. Something was wrong. Something had happened to Hans. Today I found out. Uh, we will enjoy ourselves today, eh, Umberstein? We should lunch together more often, you and I. I like good company when I eat. Good food, good company, good digestion. <laughs> and this is a wonderful restaurant that we are going to. You know, they serve Norwegian smoked salmon. That is excellent. And, and, and cheese, too. <laughs> Nothing like these new foods we are getting from Norway. I've heard of Norwegian salmon. Ah, and this is the best. You and Oberleik and Neumann dine here often, don't you? And I don't know. We came here often. And Neumann will not come here for a long, long time again. I don't understand. No, you don't. You remember Captain von Hein? Oh, oh yes, the double man who was inspecting our factory a few weeks ago. Most efficient. He has apparently been observing Hans Neumann for some time. Oberleutnant oh, Neumann is being detained by Captain von Hein. No? Was he was a spy. Spy? How do you know? I know it's only spies. And von Hein never makes a mistake. A man is incredible. Was there something suspicious about Hans? Something suspicious about... Everyone you did. He himself you asked me to that. cultivate oh, Oberleutnant Neumann so that he could better observe his actions. Yes, I, I noticed that you two lunched together very often. Uh, we lunched together at this very same restaurant you and I are going to now. It made it easy for von Hein. Easy? Uh, to study the man in leisure. Von Hein always wants to be served. And uh, where is Hans now? Who oh, knows? Who knows what happens when Captain von Hein takes a man? Just before you pull that Don't you admire such man. efficiency, Umberstein? Well, well, of course. Yeah, well, the now captain did indicate that there were others to be rounded up, too. Well, here we are. 
Oh, look. Look, you see them in the window? Norwegian salmon. Oh, they are beautiful. So red, so delicious. Are you hungry, Umberstein? What? You. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, they, they do look delicious. I can see his breath now. It's growing very cold. You're the one that He's well dressed and neatly tailored. It's too dark to tell the exact color. The only thing I was sure of was that man is good beside Rennick's typewriter with Whitman and other machines. Powerful mounted prongs encased in a gray, tightly fitting material. Style, lines running across the back. I noticed one minute. Beautiful weapon. Page 149 within the roller of I couldn't help but admire the fine breadth of his shoulders and the thick, closely barbered neck. He stood quietly by the lamppost, smoking. But then again, Watching his the breath in the smoke battle for existence, the idea. Some more than Once when he turned to look up at my window, the yes, single eyeglass he wore caught the reflection of the light. So I wondered how much he weighed. the day before yesterday. Carefully, I retraced each step over again in my mind. I couldn't find the flaw that made me a marked man. The absurdly easy way I had gone through Muller's office carrying an innocent-looking bundle of blueprints, then to the vault, to the... Oh, no one could expect what I had done. No one had any reason to. But I haven't finished yet, either. Why, then, was I trapped? Of course he was after me, waiting down there. How was this, I wondered why he didn't come up and wait in my room. Surely he didn't know I was in the room. The original man Perhaps he had searched my room one day while I was out. But what could he find? Nothing, absolutely nothing. A passport proving I was Charles Umstein. A monogram suitcase bearing the initials CU. A few letters and old papers. Nothing, nothing at all. I had never talked. It read. I had never known anyone else in service except Hans. Franz Miller was too stupid to suspect anything. Fraulein Keller. No. You're making a passport. That's why you tolerated right. him stealing all your glory. Only one other way. You have to do it. The Only publishers wanted it that way, didn't they? One and other they way. And Could he possibly have it? Because by now, Steve's name is <laughs> For an instant, the possible answer flashed through my brain. For a full five minutes, I watched him. Watched him very distinctly. No Could he? Could, Could it possibly be? But that he stillness of the yes, street below was broken from time to time by the blare of an occasional horn and the rattle of armored cars carrying soldiers to different parts of the city. I'm not going to live to repeat any of what you just Turning said. Turning the window, I put out the darkness of my room, searching for the automatic I had concealed in the compartment of my present bag. When I found it, I placed it in the chamber. It was loaded. I jammed it in my coat pocket, oh, putting on my hat. I stood there by the window, watching him. He seemed very ominous, very assured, waiting for me. He must have been getting anxious with his long vigil. I watched him signal from the cops across the street, walking back and forth. Did you get all that? Yes, Sergeant, put it all down in shorthand. All right, you'll have to come with us. Very familiar. Mrs. Reddick. A bolt from off the bed. I no, took this cord attached to the light no, switch. Uh, near the radiator pipe, room enough to pass it through. The weighted end dragging the strings to the lobby below. I picked up my suitcase. Mm-hmm. Stepped out of the door. The hall was dark and quiet. Just at the end, the lobby was empty. Steve's apartment all the time. At the bottom of the stairs, I came in the by the door. She heard the row of the desk. Door. Hastily, I jammed the two bills in an envelope and addressed it to Friday. He'd already taken his gun, so he started killing him with my suitcase. I could see him very clearly out of the corner. He was only a few feet from me. Threw the gun on the floor and lit out. Cord with his feet in the hand. Tent and bread had to take the rest. I stood there. Ask for the fire? Then it was the only way she could get rid of that evidence without attracting the attention of the police. As for Melissa Morgan, startled when the light went on upstairs, searching the window for a view of the object. I walked to the door. I opened it. I looked my way. I was bound to find out about Helen Rennick, Steve's ghost. I have always wanted to meet you, Charles Umberstein. I have always wanted to meet you face to face. You know who I am? Why, yes, you are. <laughs> I wonder. You know the others I have had my men pick up. But you, 
I wanted to attend to personally. It's because you are Charles Understein. Now we will uh, just... I'm sorry, my friend. <laughs> Sat down hard on the curb. He looked up at me, mumbled strangely, then fell over with his head in the gutter. Half fell off, and I saw that his hair was closely cropped. There were other people on the street. I ran till I was out of breath. I picked up a Berlin paper on the railroad station. On the second page, I read the headline, Gestapo official murdered. Saturday, January 25th, Captain Charles von Hein, high-ranking official of the Gestapo intelligence service, was instantly killed last night by the bullets of an unknown assailant whom he was attempting to arrest on charges of espionage. Captain von Hein had been connected with the Gestapo since 1936. Prior to his affiliation with the Gestapo intelligence, He had been known by his real name, Charles Umberstein. His entry into such dangerous work made necessary a complete retirement from all public life. The Reich will long honor the memory of Charles Umberstein. I wired flowers from Geneva with a card marked Sympathy, signed C.U. And so closes The Strange Death of Charles Umberstein by E. Jack Newman, starring Vincent Price. Tonight's tale of suspense. Vincent Price will soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, Song of Bernadette. The producer and director of suspense is William Spear. Music was composed by Lucian Malowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. This is The Man in Black who would like to draw your attention to the new day in time for suspense, beginning next week, when Cary Grant will be our star. Beginning next week, listeners in the Eastern and Central time zones will hear suspense on Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern wartime and 7 p.m. Central wartime. Listeners in the Mountain and Pacific time zones will be brought their next story of suspense on Monday, December the 6th. And each Monday thereafter at 9 p.m. Pacific Wartime. Don't forget suspense on Thursdays beginning December the 2nd if you live in Eastern and Central time zones and Mondays beginning December the 6th for listeners in the Mountain and Pacific time zones with Cary Grant, our opening guest star. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.